When drawing your sketch, I would use line paper because it gives you a really good guide to draw this from. And so I always kind of just pick a line and I say this is going to be the bottom of my vessel, which is a zero inches because it's the bottom of your vessel. Then every two spaces I say is an inch. So I always just go ahead and draw um, the scaled out, like scale this out every two inches or every two spaces, one inch, another two spaces, two inches, another two spaces, three inches, another two spaces, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Your minimum um, height requirement is eight inches, but you can go up to um, 12 inches if you want. I'm gonna stop mine at 10, just somewhere in between there, happy medium. And I draw myself a line at the top. And then I, this is where I start drawing the shape of my vessel, so I start off um, and just kind of draw the shape that I want my vessel to be. Whoa! And I use, since these are already set up for you, each space I say, um, you know, I draw my coils on. So every coil is a half inch, which is kind of equal to one space on your drawing. Um, so I just kind of start off drawing different kinds of coils. Um, <laughs> I'll show you some different kinds of options that you have at your disposal uh, in just a second. But I'm gonna do just a regular coil here and then like a swirl coil. You don't want that to be any smaller than an inch and a half, which would be three spaces. So um, I'm gonna make mine two inches. And fill this in. I want to draw um, you want at least three different kinds of coils for your assignment um, in this case I did regular coils I have swirl coils and then I'm gonna do like a twist coil where I twist two coils together um, if you're not sure you're you're not very good at drawing um, and you don't, you don't think you can draw that to make that look like that, you can always just put a little arrow that says, uh, labels what it is you want it to be. A twist. I'm gonna do another regular coil or two and then let the rest be smooth. So these are um, gonna be smoothed on the outside. So these are unexposed coils and these where you can see them are exposed. So once you have your sketch, then this is what you would use to create your whole piece. You start down here at the bottom. You know how big to make this down here at the bottom. Um, I'll cover that in just a second as how, how wide to make that on your slab. And as you move up, um, you know what the direction that you need to make your coils go, which will be covered too. So this should at any point on this sketch, five inches high, you should have this much completed. Hey, welcome to Miss Brooks vlog. <laughs> welcome to Miss Brooks vlog, and we are making coil vessels. All right, so um, the first thing you need to do for a coil vessel after you have made your sketch that you've scaled out is you need to get the bottom, the base, which is a slab. You guys know already know how to do a slab by rolling it out with a rolling pin. Any piece of paper after you've already drawn this on there, and measure it and say like, oh, it hits right here. Because this is a scaled sketch, you can take this and then just hold it up next to this and it'll tell you that you need to make it three inches wide. Much better is I find things that are already circular and then I use a ruler and I measure things and I say, oh, that's not gonna make it, it's only two and a half. So then I measure some, you know, the other side. I might measure the bottom of a, my cup or um, measure this. Okay, that's about three inches wide, or this is about three and a half or whatever. So like this is my one that's three inches wide. So then I would use this as just like a template to cut around. This aside. 
Um, and I have, I'm setting this on a turntable. These are the turntables. How many are there? I have um, a lot of them, enough for everybody. They are in the closet to the left in a box on the floor in the left. After you use them, put them back where you got them. In a box, in the closet, in a box, left. on the left, on the ground, in, in the, the box. box. In the box. Everything of these in the box to the left. That's a song. That's a song. All the turntables. Um, it's it came came right out of the factory like this you you can cut pieces off and use this um, if you do you want to make sure that you are cutting it off that it's the same thickness about on all the sides because if you make it um, a piece from a rolled out thin sheet of clay like this and you're like oh I'm just gonna use this and you cut this as your piece well you have to then like fold this squeeze it over and fold it so that it becomes skinny for you to actually roll out um, and then that just creates air bubbles in there and seams right from the get-go. I also like to stand up when I make my coils because you, I just think it's easier. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of start rolling this. When you roll out coils, you want to have your fingers kind of spread wide. Um, and I use my whole hand to roll the coils. Okay. Um, you'll find that this gets really, really big if you can't if you're really struggling with rolling this out when it's so big, um, you can always just break it down and just do half at a time um, and roll it out. If you get to the point where you have uh, a little bit of the coil is thin, stop rolling it right there. Don't keep rolling it if it's too thin there or if it gets to the thinness that you need, stop rolling it at that spot and just work around it. Okay, so then I like to also just kind of like to use my time efficiently since you don't have a lot of time in here. So I like to make several coils at a time so that I can just grab them when I'm ready as opposed to rolling a coil, putting it on there, stopping, blending, rolling a coil. Like um, it's much easier to me or much more efficient to work like a factory would. Do a bunch of the one thing at a time and then the other thing. So once I roll some coils out, I want to show you a trick. So those are the tips. Oh, I, I said use my whole hand, right? I'm using, you can see it gets wet from there to there. Also the table, I'm using the, like a good amount of the table, like nine, 10, whatever, 12, something like that, inches um, of the table. If you don't and you're working on something and you just go like this, it's gonna get flat like that and that's not good. So if you are working on that and you get um, a coil that's kind of flat, you just need to get back to where you have the same thickness on the top that you do on the, on the sides. So if it gets to the point where it's kind of like ovaled like this, See how this is kind of an oval shape instead of circle shape? All you have to do is set that up tall. I just squish it back down. So that now it's like, kind of looks like a square, but at least it's the same thickness on this side it is on this side, same, same um, dimension or whatever there and there. Then you just start rolling again. You don't want to push too hard, kind of gently push. And so you might have a spot that like is doing it on one side, but not the other. So I just like lift that up and just tap that down there and then keep going. Again, if you can't uh, manage the really long pieces, just break it down a little bit. All right, so I got a bunch of pieces here ready to go and then we can get started. You'll move much more quickly if you do it this way, rolling them out first. Plus, it'll give you a really good handle on practicing. Some of you will need a lot of practice with this, and some of you will be like naturals. And that's great. Either way, just practice if you need to. Okay. All right, so once you have um, a bunch of pieces ready to go, you want to score and slip the very first coil piece that you add. I think that's always the best policy to make sure, especially if you're going to have this as a vase or something that's going to hold water. 
flowers or whatever. You're gonna give it to your mom and she's gonna put the flowers in there. You could put flowers in there as the gift. Aww, Ooh, your mom or grandma would love that. Well, you need it. Amen. All right, now, I'm gonna, instead of just adding this right from the get-go, I'm gonna look at my sketch over here and see that, look at the direction that this is heading, okay? That's gonna be going out. So I need to start adding my coils, making my walls go out. So here's how you add coils to create the wall, um, the wall direction that you want. If you add coils and you add them directly to the top, actually, I'm gonna use a longer one. If you add coils and you're adding them directly to uh, the top of the coil before it. So you're just directly adding it right exactly on top of the other one. What kind of a wall do you get? You just get a cylinder. Yeah, you get a straight wall, you just get a cylinder, okay? And so I like to think about this like a, if I had a ruler right there. Okay, and this is a turntable that moves. So you can check this on all the sides. Like if this is what you're going for, awesome. If you want it to be out a little bit, that means you need to add the coils to the outside edge, which makes sense because if you're like, oh, I want my walls to go out, add it to the outside. So that's where you're gonna start pushing that over to the side. And the further out to the side you get, the quicker the walls go out. So you need to do, add your coil based on how your sketch is in your drawing. If it's just a little bit, you just need to scooch it out to the outside just a little bit. Okay, so see how now I'm just adding this is kind of the outside edge and it's slowly starting to pull the wall to the outside. Mm -hmm. So again, sometimes it's hard to see small, but if you have this ruler in here and if you're like, oh, this is what my, you know, the sketch is supposed to look like, you can kind of, you can really manage the, how that's being formed all the way up, the whole way up, every coil that you add. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then just di directly opposite, if you wanted to go towards the inside edge, um, or, you know, the walls to head towards the inside, you need to add this coil to the inside edge. And then that's when you get the walls angling towards the inside. Like so. Okay, now that's pretty drastic, but just to show my point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in our case, we're looking for just a slight outside, which I've already prepped this one with a slip, and I'm gonna add that on to the, kind of just barely to the outside edge. Okay, um, I recommend scoring and slipping just the first coil that you add of the day. So if you work out a bunch of coils at the very first one you add, every one after that that you add in the same day, it should all still be wet or you know, soft plastic state clay, you shouldn't have to score and slip anymore, but you should definitely blend on the inside. You can use, to blend on the inside, you can use a modeling tool <laughs> or um, a rib Please or whatever. <laughs> Put it up Tool. James Charles Matt modeling tool um, or um, a rib <laughs> <laughs> and you, so I always also support this one's the very first one so it's not as uh, detrimental to support the wall because it's probably not going anywhere but I always just support my hand there um, on it just to make sure that I'm not pushing the walls out as I'm blending it's more it's more important to do that when you get up a little bit higher and you actually have like kind of a wall and not just one coil um so i'm just smoothing smoothing that out on the inside this is my very good well joined base okay so now i'm going to start working on my next part so according to my sketch after my first coil i need to start adding that swirl <laughs> how do i get the swirl you just take the exact same coil that you already made and i'm just going to twist that or curl that in on itself and create the coil how big do i need to make that sw that swirl i mean an inch and a half inch and a half so that's where I use my ruler and I just keep rolling this until I get to an inch and a half and once I'm there I just stop it and then I'm gonna add that on there um, and actually I think that it's a lot easier when you have swirls or like really complicated designs that you're adding it's a little easier if you blend it out ahead of time so I hold that in my hand like this and I'll use my finger or a modeling tool or a rib whatever you want to use to help blend that out right from the get-go and that way it doesn't, um, it stays in the same piece and it's easy to kind of just add um, on there. And I need two of them, so I'm gonna go ahead and make oh, another one. Good. 
Okay, again, I'm keeping in mind the angle that I need that wall to be. It doesn't matter what I add on this, it's gonna form the wall. So you have to make sure um, that you're creating the same kind of angle. So if you look at this, um, it's, it's angling out. So now I gotta fill this in. On the right side, I have coils. On the left side, it's smooth. So I can use um, coils and just fill this in. Again, I wanna make sure that I'm working. I know that the whole rest of the way up is just regular coils, so that's all I have to do. Um, so I'm going to add these coils on, and remember, I want them to be kind of on the outside edge because I'm really aiming to look for that, to like kind of make this shape. So I want those to be leaned out a little bit all the way up. So, and, and actually, sometimes I like to make, I don't blend every coil I put on there because think about like a factory work you wouldn't do one thing completely done and then do the next thing. Like one person's in charge of every part, but since you're the only one doing it, you can do a bunch of the same things over and then blend it all together and it'll save you time. I'll need to blend the inside and the outside because if you're looking at this on the left side of my sketch, I have it blended out. So I would really want to come back and blend this out. I want to talk to you guys about one more thing um, in here. If you are blending this and you find that it doesn't quite get all the way uh, to there, so especially if it's like swirls or um, little ball pieces that you're adding on or whatever it is that you're adding on and it's rounded, those sometimes don't make it all, the, the corners don't get blended. There's a little hole in them. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that very easily. You just grab some clay, um, pinch it flat and set it in there. As long as it's plastic state clay, you don't have to score and slip and you just add it to it and blend it out like it didn't have a hole. When you are blending the outside, if you have a p if you're deciding to use blend it um, outside where it looks like it's uh, unexposed pieces, you want to be very careful. And I want to show you this uh, so that you're paying attention to it when you do it. So again, I have that hole inside of there. I don't know if you guys can see it um, from there. If you can see where the light mm -hmm. is, like a little bitty light thing coming through. Um, if you just uh, if you just pinch a little piece of clay like this and set it in there in that hole and then smooth it out. Nice. Someone smell like KFC. <laughs> Not bad. Then that'll fix that. Here's what I also want you to do. Check into this. So I just built up like two, three, two, three, two <coughs> inches, two and a half inches maybe. Um, mm -hmm on there i want to come down and get eye level with this and and turn this turntable to make sure that all the sides are doing what i want it to do because sometimes as you're working on this this might be kind of straight and this one might be kind of curved and you don't really realize it until you get on eye level and check it compared to your sketch does that make sense you really want to check in all the time because if you you can easily fix it if i noticed that it was like that now i can easily fix this and bend it because it's soft, pliable clay. Um, does that make sense? You really want to check in all the time because if you, you can easily fix it. If I notice that it was like that now, I can easily fix this and bend it because it's soft, pliable clay. Um, really easy to fix now, not easy to fix once you've added 10 more coils on it and, um, and it's now hard down here. You can't change it. Does that make sense? Um, remember we talked about blending this outside. So this is my side. I'm keeping regular uh, coils on the right side. This is going to be my left side. So I'm going to blend that out. You would do it the same way. I do want to pay attention and make sure that I'm not blending it to this. So that will look like 
you just have to be careful on that part of it. Okay, so I'm using this modeling tool and it um, works pretty well. This is kind of what I like to use. Um, but sometimes when I get to this wider pieces or when I'm moving up a little bit higher on the, um, the coil vessel, you can switch over to a modeling, I mean a rib. This works really well too, um, to kind of push that clay around. Uh, be careful if you're just going like this, that doesn't really smooth out the seams. You have to do it like vertically or at an angle to really smooth that out. I'm just going to be really careful around the swirls so that it doesn't mess that up. is I would start again and I would make my, um, I would roll out my coil again and I would move them over a little bit according to my sketch. I would move that over so that the coil is now just to the right side of that one. Does that make sense? Okay, and then I'd blend it out and add it on and then I would make this one move a little bit over too and then I'd do the same thing and work my way up. Again, I wanna keep making sure I'm going out, 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 out and that'll help me get that. I'll show you one more thing and then I'm gonna let you go, okay? Um, so I'm gonna set that aside. If you have a, a coil vessel that's like this one, that's a little complex designs going on in it, that doesn't mean you should stay away from this. It's actually not that hard to do, and let me show you how. Um, so if you're looking at that, you know, kind of imp intricate kind of design, if you grab a piece of paper um, and you know it needs to be like three, on your sketch, it tells you it needs to be like three inches tall. Um, so you can just measure that on here, three inches tall or three and a half or whatever you, whatever it's supposed to be on your sketch and kind of draw the shape that you needed to fill. Draw that um, kind of complicated design on an actual piece of paper. Just use, um, so you can make a little, I know I need little ball pieces. I'm playing. I'm, I'm like, oh, shut up. And then use this other, you know, use this uh, sketch that you drew as your um, guideline, as like your template. And you can do this, I, that's is exactly what I did for this piece right here, is I made this little sketch, put it on a piece of paper, do what I, I knew what size it needed to be, made it the size that I needed, and then I'll show you, you can just pick it up and blend it all together. So that, cause this is kind of complicated to have to like put on your coil vessel. Um, that is like so cool. We need more. <coughs> It's important to kind of make sure that you have like neat coils because it's easier to fix the coils off of it than it once it is on it. You can still fix some things, but you want it to still be nice and neat. So once I did this, I kind of just like put this in my hand and flipped it over and then um, then you can blend this. And I put it in my hand um, instead of the tabletop because if I'm pushing on it really hard, it could flatten the coils on the other side. And I want them to look like they're still rounded coils. So um, I just like pick it up and my hand's a little bit softer. Uh, it's a little, got a little give in it compared to the table. So I just pick it up and hold it in my hand. I blend that out. All right, so now I have one piece of uh, clay to work with and add to, um, add to, like one piece is so much easier to hold on to than if I have all of these little ball pieces to worry about and that it's a vertical and a lot of stuff going on. So then I can really use this and I can bend it and <coughs> manipulate it so that it's kind of creating the shape that I needed to create.